we'll go there now. Who was um, Moses de Leon, Moshe de Leon, and what was his contribution to the development of Kabbalah? So that's also an interesting question, and it's a, a question where um, scholarship has really evolved over the past 20 years, and I think it's a case also where sort of the popular knowledge of what scholarship thinks about these questions has not evolved with, with scholarship. There's kind of a, a bit of a gap there. So so who was who was Moshe de Leon? He was a Mikubal who lived in the second half of the 13th century in Castile, uh, you know, a region in Spain. He was a very voluminous writer. We have uh, numerous works of his in Hebrew. Uh, for a long time, those works were only, for the most part, with one or two exceptions in manuscript. Uh, now, though, virtually, if not all of his works are now available, all his Hebrew works, where he's the signed author, are are available in Hebrew, um, are available, in, I should say, in, in printed editions. Uh, now, that's why, not why he's interesting to scholars, though. Why he's interesting to scholars is his relationship to the Zohar. And what led to the notion that there's a connection between Moshe de Leon and the Zohar is a text by another Kabbalist named Yitzchak de Minako, Isaac of Acre, who was a younger contemporary of Moshe de Leon. Uh, it's not a text that's preserved in its entirety. It's only partially preserved in a later work. It's apparently from a journal that Yitzchak de Minako kept. And in this partially preserved text, he says, he, he tells us that there was a debate and that he's writing, as I say, he's a younger contemporary of De Leon. There was a debate of what she's become aware about the Zohar. Some say that De Leon is the author. Others say, no, De Leon is not the author. Uh, De Leon had the manuscript of Shimon Bar Yochai that he just distributed. And uh, Yitzhak Dabinako was almost like a detective. He kind of goes to investigate uh, this account, and he actually meets Moshe de Leon. And Moshe de Leon swears to him, yes, I have the manuscript in my house. Uh, they, they didn't meet in Moshe de Leon's hometown. They met somewhere else. Moshe de Leon says, you know, come visit me at home. I'll show you the manuscript. Uh, but before that happens, Moshe de Leon dies. Uh, so, you know, Yitzhak Timidako never gets to see the manuscript. But he continues his, his investigation and he gets all kinds of different accounts. Um, he hears, although not firsthand, um, that Moshe de Leon's daughter and wife uh, said that Moshe de Leon ne never had a manuscript. He wrote it from his own head. And the only reason he claimed it was by Shimon Bar Yochai was because he could sell it for more money. Um, he meets other people who say, no, students of de Leon who say, no, that's not true at all. Uh, he, he is indeed... Uh, he's not the author, he, he had the manuscript. Um, and and it's, his text cuts off. We don't, we don't get to his full account. We don't know, you know, what other evidence he may have, he may have, un, he may have uncovered. But that's what made scholars really turn to look at Moshe de Leon um, and compare his Hebrew works that I mentioned to the Zohar. And based on that comparison, um, scholars were led to the conclusion that Moshe de Leon was the author of the Zohar, uh, primarily because there were passages in his Hebrew works that apparently he attributes to himself uh, that then appear in the Zohar uh, in an Aramaic form. So, so that that's that's the scholarly. That was the scholarly point of view. And as you know, this, this is a, a, a point of view of great contention. It's been one that's been very heavily debated. Um, more recent scholarship actually has developed a more complex point of view uh, where Moshe de Leon is not the single author of the Zohar, uh, but he's an author who uh, worked in a circle with other authors. Uh, if anyone's interested, um, Yehuda Libis, who is a 
a professor, was a professor, he's retired at, at uh, Hebrew University, wrote a classic article called Kutzad Dichaber Sefer HaZohar, where he um, advances this thesis of multiple group authorship of the Zohar. And some of his students, uh, most notably Ronit Miroz, uh, has, has further developed this thesis, arguing that it, it was a generational project. It wasn't only written not by one person, not even by one circle, but maybe by multiple circles over several generations. Um, you know, the jury is still out on all these things. I think these are all things that, um, you know, that require more manuscript work, uh, more comparative work. So I, I don't think sort of we're, we've reached the end of the story about the authorship of the Zohar. There, there may still be, you know, new discoveries as we, uh, you know, just as we gain more more access to more materials.